We are going to fabricate ourselves um, a quick rake for the excavator. Uh, we've got a project that we need to clean up um, a lot of small brush that is um, on this lady's property. I'm not getting much of it with the skid loader grapple. The grapple's wide, um, so it kind of leaves stuff in the middle if there's a low spot, things like that. And I really need to be able to, to, to really just rake it with the excavator arm. Uh, into a pile and then take it and probably throw it in the dump truck. We're not going to be doing any sort of um, you know precision cutting with this. This is kind of a more of a uh, rough around the edges project. Um, we've got a three inch bar here. Um, it's three eighths inch thick. It's four feet long. We have three inch wide by three eighths inch thick uh, flat stock by ten feet long. Uh, we've got some I believe it's an inch and three quarter um, schedule 80 pipe and we've got some uh, 3 8 inch plate that we are going to be using we're going to be cutting it and this is going to become an ear basically right um, so we'll have two of these right to become an ear we'll have a uh, flat stock on the top be welded like a welded u um, and then that flat stock uh, is at the machine shop right now getting drilled in order to mate with our um, CAT 305 excavator uh, bucket ears adapter plate. What we're gonna work on first is just, we're gonna go with eight inch long tines. So we're gonna cut this down into eight inch pieces. We're gonna get a square and we're gonna put our end caps on. This is not gonna be perfect in that this is three eight inches, but it's three inches with the outside being rounded. So we're gonna have to fill some weld there. That's fine. There's many ways you can build one of these things. And you know, what I'm after is not a production product. Uh, it's just something to um, get the project done and last long enough that you know, we can use it somewhere else sometime too. But we're not, like I said, we're not cutting these in a teeth shape or anything. We're just doing, um, you know, flat stock uh, welded tines. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I think we're gonna use three inch spacing, but uh, that's to be determined. Um, so let's go ahead and start getting these cut into eight inch length pieces. I think we're going to try this on nine inches. And we're just going to kind of, this not be perfect. Nine inches. So we have an interesting situation here. The welder calls for a, um, a 0.045 wire. I went and found that, I found a 10 pound spool, that's all I could find it in. And come to find out the gun uh, on the welder, the, I have a 45 tip and I have the 45 wheel that feeds it, but the 45 wire keeps getting jammed up in the gun. I've had to pull it out twice. So I'm going back to the 35 wire, you know, hopefully, our settings are gonna, hopefully it'll make good contact. If not, we'll have to figure something else out. So we're gonna go ahead and, we're just tack welding everything for now. had enough metal to give us a, a 13 times total. So we've got our end tines and we got 11 tines in between. Our outside tines measure 46 and a half inches. Uh, we have room for 11 tines. We have no materials here for 11 tines. So 11 tines of three inch in steel, I took 11.38 and it came up with four some inches. So I subtracted that and 
roughly there's going to be three and a three quarters of an inch between each tine. Calculating for the thickness um, of that as we move. So uh, that's what we're going to use as our measurement. Um, and I wish I had something that was that size um, that I could just stick in between, but we're just going to measure them. And we're just going to tack these. I'm going to tack them all because if I need to tap them, we're going to put pipes between them. And if I need to tack them or move them, or I'm sorry, if I need to tap them or move them, I want them tacked as opposed to full on welded. I know I said that with the outsides, but uh, I lied. So. perfectly I mean it does lay pretty well so it may not be you know every one of these may not be perfectly straight this way but it doesn't really matter for what we're doing with it um, it's not terribly off and that's the only thing that's important so I'm good with it so we are going to uh, Probably not tonight. We're going to cut pipes for each one of these, and we're going to go about halfway in, and we're going to connect these with pipes for extra strength. And we'll tack the pipes, and then once we've tacked the pipes, we'll go through and we'll be welding everything 100%. So I think this is a stopping point for today. This one's just a smidge tight, but I think I can. I think I'm okay. Just tapping it with a hammer. That's good. I'll go ahead and get attack on this. I got these all tacked in. Uh, now we just need to run uh, good beads of weld. So we're gonna weld up, I think I'm gonna do the whole bottom. And then I think we're gonna weld around these pipes. But everything's tacked and it's pretty sturdy. Um, and uh, I think it looks pretty decent. Uh, hopefully the flat spots aren't gonna give me a problem. I mean, it's really just meant to drag against the ground. Um, you know, the more I built this, the more I thought maybe I should have just used like uh, what a shank, like shank teeth, for like a box blade. But um, I didn't think about that when I when I was picturing this design. So we'll see. Hopefully the teeth are long enough. Um, you know, hopefully these don't wear too fast. Like I said, I'm not digging with it. I'm just literally scraping the ground with it. 
Um, so I think they'll last a while, but we'll see. It'll just be a time, time will tell. So we got this all welded up. It's not perfect, but it works. What's more, most important is the uh, spacing of the teeth. I'm trying to make least amount of brush fall through. We might have to even put something in between these if I'm having problems with brush coming in between them. But we'll see how it works at the at the site and go from there. I'm kind of regretting possibly not putting points on it, but it's not really meant to be. It's not meant to dig. It's it's meant to just scrape the sur top surface and get all the brush and vegetation. That's why I didn't think the teeth were important. Um, uh, but now I'm kind of wondering if there's another way I could put teeth on it now. But uh, that might be a project for a different time. I don't want to redo anything because we've got a decent chunk of money in this. This is the plate we bought. We found this on eBay for the Cat 305 excavator. We paid about $550 for the plate, this plate here. Uh, and uh, this is just uh, 45 millimeter pins. This is just um, inch and three quarter uh, cold roll. Uh, which is 44.6 like millimeter, which is plenty good enough for this. Uh, I took the machine shop. I had them drill uh, holes for one inch bolts um, on both sides. So hopefully you can see how this is going to come together. We've got the plates that we have to make on our attachment, but one of the plates here <coughs> is uh, also from the machine shop. So the machine shop made me this plate, right? This plate's also got matching one inch holes. So um, you can see that the these side these are gonna be the sides, side ears, right? And then that plate's gonna be on the top, and that's how it's gonna bolt to the to the machine. So we're gonna knock out that last bit of fabrication today, and uh, and then we'll get this uh, going. Okay, so we got this bolted up. You just have to weld these sides. On both sides, I already did the other side, <clears throat> but I don't. I like to weld horizontally, so that's why I reposition. All right. Let's take a better look at this. Okay. So, this bolts to that. And we have our welds. And that's pretty much all we're going to do. My neighbor's kids working in my uh, garage attached to the house. We're going to take this over here, over there. We're going to let him get this all these welds wire brushed. Um, and while he's doing that, I'm going to go get um, some paint and uh, some self-etching paint. And we're just going to put a coat of paint on it. And then we're going to go see uh, if it works. Stay tuned. Okay, we've got the finished uh, rake here. I did throw some paint on it just so that uh, it would not rust out very much. And uh, this is uh, a job site that I've been working on. I did a lot of the groundwork here. Uh, story here briefly is just that the uh, tree guys um, had abandoned this. They left oodles and oodles of material. I was burning for five or six days. Uh, but anyway, I got it all scraped up. And uh, I didn't do any of the planting. Customer did all the planting. I put that flagpole in. That's uh, in 2,000 pounds of concrete. I delivered and placed those boulders. Customer did the mulch. Uh, I spurred this rock, but the customer did all the pl planting. And I did the shed pad for that building back there. What the other side used to look like is this. And so we're gonna start scraping this. You can see how the debris, and I've, I br brush hogged this a couple months ago. Uh, and then now that we've gotten to warmer weather, um, I dug this swale. The property was so flooded, you'd sink to your knees. I've got to, still got to clean this up uh, when I have the machine here with the bucket. 
but uh, I gotta get the bucket on, a, on another day. But I dug out this whole swale. What happened is the tree guys had uprooted all the uh, the trees over here, and uh, it it ruined the berm, and everything was flooding out to the property, and it was like you literally sink to your boots, uh, your knees. Um, so it was crazy. But I restored this swale, and yeah, so this was a big, 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 big job. Um, that occurred over over the last summer and we're gonna start raking this up and see how this thing works
Okay, so we kind of just raked along the path there. Um, and we pretty much got the majority of the big stuff. Um, there were some things we missed that were still semi-attached. We might go over it twice. We probably will, actually. Um, you know, the constantly dragging the pile back, you know, increases your chances of leaving something behind every time. So um, I almost wish it was some sort of clamp mechanism. But uh, it works good enough for what we're doing. Um, so we would probably just uh, probably go over it twice would be my guess. But I mean, it definitely it's definitely collecting. I might make some piles and then bring the skid loader and uh, try to get it all uh, so I don't have to move it back as much. But I mean, it's working. I mean, that's the sticks and brush that we pulled out of um maybe 60 60 feet by the width of the excavator so and there's not really all that much dirt in there i think it works pretty decent for for what it is we've got about 800 bucks into it with the plate so maybe 900 bucks i'd have to check the math but under a thousand and we'll use that plate for our auger, so I don't mind so much on that. It's at least a lot clearer, uh, a lot more clear, and uh, we'll probably brush cut this again too once we're done. So that might take all the other pieces into more of a fine. But um, but yeah, so that's essentially uh, how we're using the rake, and uh, and generally um, it's pretty decent. So we're gonna keep on trucking along and get this all the way to the to the white fence line cleared so and hopefully we don't uh find any missing stumps that i didn't grind all right so that concludes our video on the excavator rake uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you like and subscribe and we'll continue bringing more videos of things we're in the homestead thanks